tradition and culture of Sri Lanka, we call upon our distinguished guests to mark the commencement of this historic occasion with traditional lighting of the oil lamp. We cordially invite Dr. Ananda Vijay Vikrama, the outgoing president of the Ceylon College of Physicians, Professor Senaka Raja Paksa, the incoming president of the Ceylon College of Physicians, Dr. Lakshman Ranasinghe, the council representative to the board of trustees, Dr. J.B. Piris, the PRAS President of the Ceylon College of Physicians, Dr. Arosha Disanayaka, President-elect of the Ceylon College of Physicians, Dr. Suranga Manilgama, the Honorary Treasurer, Dr. Shamita Dasanayaka, and Dr. Chamila Mehta Nanda, the Honorary Joint Secretaries of the Ceylon College of Physicians to light the oil lamp.
like to call upon Professor Senaka Rajapaksa, the incoming president, Dr. Ananda Vijay Vikrama, the outgoing president, Dr. Shamita Disanayaka and Dr. Chamila Mehtananda, the honorary joint secretaries of the Ceylon College of Physicians, to grace us at the head table. Once again, a very good evening. And now I'd like to invite Dr. Ananda Vijay Vikrama, the outgoing president, to deliver the welcome address. Professor Senaka Rajapaksha, President of the Ceylon College of Physicians, members of the Board of Trustees, past presidents, members of the Council, fellows, and members of the Ceylon College of Physicians, and also those who are joining online with us today, and ladies and gentlemen. As the outgoing president, I'm honored today to welcome you on behalf of the Council of the Ceylon College of Physicians to the ceremonial induction of the 45th president of our college. In these forbidden circumstances, it's a great pleasure to have all of you with us this evening. Ladies and gentlemen, with permission from Professor Senaka Rajapaksha, who owns this special occasion, permit me to take a few moments to very briefly go through the activities of the college in 2020. First, as done a year before, I wish to thank you for electing me as the president of the Ceylon College of Physicians. I believe that is the highest honor and the privilege a physician can get. We conceptualize the theme of reaching out to new vistas to strengthen the work of the college. However, in a strange coincidence, we did not agree on wordings of the theme and we went ahead with induction of the president without a formulated theme. So with later developments, it was not an issue of having a new theme. As of any other president, new president and the council, we too had a lot of plans. And we started preparing plans to implement those. And we started well. In early January, we had the induction of the president and we invited uh, Dr. Anil Jasinga, who was then Director General of Health Services, mainly thinking of having closer relationship with the Ministry of Health. And in view of the subsequent development, of course, we had to have very close relationships. Then we had the first Young Physicians Forum on 14th of January, and then we had preparatory course for part one in early February. And on 25th of February, we had the YPF. Uh, then we had the uh, specialty day on geriatrics, which were uh, well attended. And then we had the Young Physicians Forum at Anuradhapura, which was again well attended. And then the next day, we went to Polon Narua to have a regional meeting. Again, both the doctor's program and the nurse's program were very well attended. On our way back, we visited Ritigala, which had a lot of ancient ruins. I wonder whether you have ever traveled in a landmaster. Probably not. It's not an easy task, especially when the road is rugged. When we pose for this photo, we never thought that our journey for the rest of the year would be like that. And in fact, we had a ride on that day. 
three together. And then next month, we had the first COVID patient who was reported the local patient. Then the things changed very rapidly due to widespreading COVID-19 pandemic. Many things we planned initially could not be done. On the other hand, we did many things which we did not plan initially. As the COVID-19 spread across the country, we as the college were actively involved in COVID-19 related activities. And I had a dual role, one as the president of the Ceylon College of Physicians and the other as the senior physicians as the physician at the National Institute of Infectious Diseases. Each added a strength to the other. And I believe there was no better time for the physician of National Institute of In uh, Infectious Diseases to be the president of the Ceylon College of Physicians. Our activities for the year have been detailed in the secretary's report presented at the AGM. However, I would they are, like to highlight a few that were carried out throughout the year. We had six college lectures and eight YPF sessions, which included uh, two outstation programs at Teaching Hospital Anuradhapura and Teaching Hospital Kandy. And due to the closure of the country for nearly two months, we had to work with restrictions. And uh, the, we had four specialty up, updates on geriatric medicine, critical care medicine, infectious diseases, and maternal medicine. The latter three were conducted as webinars. Then we had uh, three regional meetings. Following the Polonaro regional meeting, we had three. Uh, we had two other regional meetings at Navalapiti and Hambantota. The latter two at Navalapiti and Hambantota were live streamed for the first time and also video recorded and uploaded to the website. These include diverse academic programs for medical officers and nurses. These uh, regional meetings were followed by excursions and uh, we had the opportunity on our way back to go on sightseeing. And then that allowed us uh, to experience things which we haven't experienced before and have achievements we have never had. Clinical audit was a newly added topic for the regional meetings as it was identified as an important area. In the annual academic conference too, a prize was awarded for the best presentation on clinical audit. We had several webinars on other topics, one on do's and don'ts of presentation, and then we had five COVID-19 related webinars, one on the clinical spectrum of COVID-19, COVID-19 Sri Lankan experience, critical care in COVID-19, facing the second wave of the COVID-19, and then to quarantine or not to quarantine. Then we had other COVID-19 related activities. An expert committee was formed by, the, by our college with the support of our other colleges and associations, and our recommendations were included in the national guideline and national strategy. And then a video was made to motivate health staff. This was done aiming to alleviate the fear and the stigma associated with COVID. This was aired in Sri Lanka, Rupawahini. We had uh, weekly COVID updates during the initial period, and we had four issues of this. Then we did a webinar for public on COVID-19. This was done as an interview with Professor Malik Piris, and that was very widely received with more than 20,000 views. The WHO commissioned our college to produce five national guidelines for the Ministry of Health, focusing on secondary and tertiary care uh, institutions, on hypertension, diabetes, dyslipidemia, risk assessment, and primary prevention of cardiovascular disease, and chronic respiratory disease. We migrated to a brand new website for the college, and that included a multiple choice based continuous medical education section. And on this, we had an interactive section 
which generates CME certificate when the activity is completed. Topics in geriatric medicine, palliative care, gastroenterology, and nephrology were covered this year. And I am sure this will be improved under the leadership of uh, Professor Senaka Rajapaksha, who is very keen in education based on uh, IT. There were three issues of College of College Journal published during the year, and that cleared the backlog. And that had been the wish of the college for several years. And I thank you uh, for the editors for this achievement. Two medicine updates were published this year, and five e-newsletters were published too. Physicians lens a glimpse of Sri Lanka. This new feature photography competition was done to explore the and share talents of physicians. An exhibition too was planned to be held together with the annual conference, but unfortunately we could not have that due to COVID restrictions. However, selected photographs were displayed in, as a coffee table book, which was launched at the AGM. Annual academic conference was held as a virtual event from 19th to 21st of November. We had to adhere to all the precautionary measures recommended by the Ministry of Health. However, in spite of those challenges, we were able to have a successful annual conference. Two pre-congress workshops were conducted on research methodology for trainees and frailty and sarcopenia in older adults. The latter was done in collaboration with Sri Lanka Association of Geriatric Medicine. The annual conference was held as a collaborative event with Royal College of Physicians London and Royal College agreed to award 23 CME points to the conference. Dr. Palita Bacon, former chairman Nata, was the chief guest at the inauguration held on 19th November. And Professor Andrew Goddard, president of the RCP, addressed the gathering online as the guest of honor. The conference comprised of eight teaching capsules, 12 symposia, and four plenaries. This was contributed by 18 foreign and 46 local speakers. Four speakers from the Royal College of Physicians London, including the president, joined the sessions as resource persons. The prestigious CCP oration was delivered by Professor Nilika Malaviki on immunological and molecular epidemiological aspect of COVID-19 in Sri Lanka. Professor Asita De Silva and Professor Niroshini Nirmalan delivered, the, do, delivered Dr. Cyril Fernando Memorial Oration and the Professor P.B. Fernando Memorial Oration respectively. 20 oral presentations and 22 posters were selected from abstracts submitted for the conference and they were published as a journal supplement. 469 registered online for the conference. In addition, there were many meetings conducted at several hospitals, screening proceedings of the conference. This shows that in spite of COVID restrictions, it reached a wider audience. These achievements are the result of collective work and effort of the wonderful council that I was privileged to be a member of. The commitment of members was unparalleled. Especially in difficult times I had due to heavy workload of COVID, support and the encouragement I had from members of the council was remarkable. Just to say thank you is inadequate at times such as these. Nevertheless, I thank them wholeheartedly for the unconditional support I had and for the commitment and dedication they showed. However, I would like to acknowledge a few by name for their leadership in key activities of the college. Dr. Shamit Dasanayake for organizing the YPF, which included two outstation programs, and Dr. Indika Boteju for arranging the college lectures during the year. The coordinators of the specialty days, Dr. Shehan De Silva, Dr. Dilshan Priyankara, Dr. Panduka Karunanayake, and Dr. Indika Boteju. Dr. Pith Sudarshan and Dr. Dammika Somaratne and Dr. Kusal Gunasekara for organizing regional meetings at Polonnaru, Navalpiti, and Hambantota, respectively. Dr. Asanta Ganevath for organizing the program at Tangol and also for coordinating the CME activity via the website. Dr. Krishanta Jayasekar for organizing the hands on workshop on ultrasonography. Dr. Dumita Govindapala for organizing the presentation skills workshop. Dr. Sanjeeva Vijaykon for coordinating the MCQ course. 
and Dr. Puldi Sanayaka, Dr. Tushara Matayas, and Dr. Dumita Govindapal for coordinating the MD Part 2 preparatory course. Professor Kamani Vaniga Surya and Professor Namal Vijay Singh, co editors, and the panel of editors for editing and publishing the CCP journal uh, warrants a special thanks. And I also wish to thank Dr. Henry Rajaratnam for compiling the medicine update, Dr. Chamila Mettananda for compiling the newsletter and COVID update, and Dr. Kishar Gunratnam for coordinating the college website. The photography exhibition, exhibition was coordinated by Dr. Nilanka Pera and Dr. Kishar Gunratne with the support and the guidance of Professor Chandani Vanigatunga and Professor Diniti Fernandu and Dr. Darshan Vijay Gunasinghe. Uh, and they compiled and edited the coffee book, uh, coffee table book too. I also wish to thank Professor Senaka Rajapaksha, Dr. Matthias and Dr. Priyamali Jayasekar for coordinating the project on guidelines for the WHO. I wish to thank uh, Dr. Nihal Gunitilaka for coordinating the activities of the cricket team. And Dr. Priyankar Jayavadana, Dr. Puldi Sanayaka, Dr. Suranga Manilgama, and Dr. Chandi Mani Undugodage for their invaluable help in obtaining sponsorship for anniversary academic sessions and other activities. And I wish to state at this point we had a record profit from the annual academic sessions. And also, it is important to understand or realize that because of COVID restrictions, we were able to cut down a lot of unnecessary expenditure, uh, doing away with unnecessary, uh, lot of unnecessary things. I would like to place on record my deep appreciation to Mrs. Manil Hidalarachi for ably managing the office and to Mr. Kumar Fernandu and Dr. Sarat, Mr. Sarat Tetiarachi for their support towards the college, all activities of the college. I would also like to thank the pre-interns uh, we had three wonderful pre-interns, Dr. Kalani Madhu Shalyanage and Mahela Munasinghe for their super work and commitment. I thank the Board of Trustees and the past president representatives in the council. I would like to thank especially Professor Chandani Vanikatunga and Dr. Panduka Karunanayaka for their invaluable guidance at all times. Whenever I had a problem, I could go to them. They were my final port of call. I wish to thank profusely to our sponsors for helping us in sponsoring our academic activities. It was heartening to see that they were standing with us in spite of difficult times faced by them due to economic crisis caused by COVID. A year ago, I had many plans and dreams. Some of those had to be changed. Looking back, I can see there are many achievements in spite of difficult circumstances posed by COVID. This could have been different if not for three people who stood by my side throughout the year. They are my treasurer and two joint secretaries. They only not worked hard, but had to take over many tasks meant to be done by me. And Suranga not only managed the finances meticulously, he took over many other responsibilities outside his job. And, and thank you very much, Suranga. Whenever I had a problem, I could reach him and get, uh, get his advice. Thank you, Suranga. And my two secretaries, Kishara and Nilanka, not only they were doing their job, most of the time they did my job too. And also from the beginning itself, they started thinking for me too. And I was guided by them. Thank you. Nilanka and Kishara for your excellent, excellent support. And I don't think I can, I could have imagined of having better secretaries than two of you. Thank you. And then I wish to thank my family for tolerating my time with the college. And also I had to spend a lot of time on other COVID activities. And I had to, I have to thank them. Looking ahead, the task ahead may not be easy with COVID in this year too. However, I'm sure Professor Senak Rajapaksha is quite capable of handling this situation. Senak, you will have my fullest support and I request you to give him, I request you all to give him your fullest support as you have given me. So let me conclude by wishing Senak and his council 
all our members and the college a very productive and successful 2021. Thank you. Thank you, sir. I'd like to take this opportunity to invite you again to introduce our incoming president, Professor Senaka Rajapaksa. It is my great pleasure, ladies and gentlemen, to introduce Professor Senaka Rajapaksha as the President of the Ceylon College of Physicians for the year 2021. Professor Senaka Rajapaksha is currently the Director of Postgraduate Institute of Medicine, University of Colombo. He is Senior Professor in the Department of Clinical Medicine, University of Colombo, and Honorary Consultant Physician, National, National Hospital Colombo. He graduated with first class honors from the University of Colombo in 1993, winning many awards and distinctions. He had the MD and MRCP UK and is a fellow of the Royal College of Physicians, London and Edinburgh, the American Col College of Physicians, the Ceylon College of Physicians, and the National Academy of Science of Sri Lanka. He is past president of the Sri Lanka Society of Internal Medicine and the regional advisor for the Royal College of Physicians, Edinburgh. He is co-editor of the Ceylon Medical Journal and is on the editorial board of several journals. His main research interest is in tropical infectious diseases and he has over 135 publications in peer-reviewed journals with over 3,500 citations and an H index of 35. He has won numerous research awards including many presidential awards for research. The University of Colombo Award for Excellence in Research in 2002, 2011 and 2015 and the Vice Chancellor's Award for Excellence in Research in 2016. He was awarded the CVCD Most Outstanding Senior Researcher Award in Medical Science in the year 2016, which is a lifetime award for excellence in research. I have great pleasure in introducing Professor Senaka Rajapaksha and inducting him today as the next president of the Ceylon College of Physicians. Thank you, sir. Now we move on to the most important item on the agenda for this evening, the induction of the president. May I invite Professor Senaka Rajapaksa and Dr. Ananda Vijay Vikrama to come forward for the proceeding. The members of the Ceylon College of Physicians have on this day, 8th of January 2021, elected you their president for the ensuing year. I hereby, by their authority and in their name, present you the insignia of the College of the President of the Ceylon College of Physicians. I solemnly give my faith that I will observe the statutes, bylaws, and regulations of the Ceylon College of Physicians. Professor Senaka Rajapaksa, now I would like to cordially invite you to deliver the presidential address. Thank you. Trustees of the college, past presidents, fellows and members of the college, ladies and gentlemen, I stand before you honored and humbled as I take the reins of the president of the College of Physicians in its 54th year. I follow in the footsteps of my predecessors, distinguished physicians who have left their footprints in the sands of time. They, with their councils behind them, have worked relentlessly over the years to bring our college to what it is today. It is the, most, the oldest and the most distinguished body of physicians in this country. I thank the past presidents for electing me and the fellows and members for the confidence that they have placed in me. 
This is the highest accolade that can be bestowed upon a physician in this country. And it is my great privilege to take this honor. I congratulate the outgoing president, Dr. Anand Vijay Vikrama, and his council on the wonderful work done under the most trying circumstances that we have had to face in a lifetime. When I look at the new council, I see a strong and dynamic team chosen carefully to represent the many different subspecialties, giving our college diversity and strength while building strong links with the many specialist colleges and associations in the country. What we do this year, we do as a team sharing our ideas to take our college to new heights. Ladies and gentlemen, it's been a difficult year and mankind is facing its greatest challenge in a century. A world war like no other world war against an invisible enemy an enemy against whom we have few weapons. This isn't the first time that nature has turned against us in this manner, perhaps to remind us how fragile we are. In 1918 and 1919, the influenza pandemic, the so-called Spanish flu, is estimated to have claimed almost 100 million lives, more lives than the two world wars put together. There are scores of books and movies and songs about the great world wars. But little is remembered of the pandemic because human memory is such a strange thing and human nature is so resilient. This is a phenomenon known as the world's collective amnesia. Because there is little glory or heroism in disease, while reminiscence paints war with a false glory. The world wanted to forget the Spanish war, the Spanish flu, to pretend that it never happened, just as we will one day want to forget these awful days. But history has a tendency to repeat itself across the world. This pandemic is now a great war which is raging, but it is a war which we must have the confidence to win. This is a war which is fought in the hospitals, fought in the community and in the laboratories. A war which we must fight without thought of surrender. There is little glory for the soldiers of this war. No decorations or medals and no heroic doctor has, been, has ever won a Victoria Cross for saving a patient. For the physicians who battle the disease, there is only the grim sadness of losing patients they fight to keep alive and the unexpected joy of seeing a dying patient rally round and recover. We must honor and felicitate the brave soldiers of this war, the healthcare staff around the world, our dear colleagues who risk their lives every day to keep us safe. We must also pay tribute to those colleagues of ours who have been casualties of this great war. Those unsung and sometimes victimized heroes who gave their lives fighting to save the lives of others. Ladies and gentlemen, the pandemic brought with it great fear. At the beginning, the fear of dying of COVID-19 gripped the society, a deadly disease which was merciless and which could unexpectedly kill. Later on, people started being afraid of being found to have COVID-19 with the fear of being stigmatized, shunned and locked away, becoming greater than the fear of being stricken by the disease itself. This is the darkest side of the pandemic. The old and sick are hiding away without seeking medical care. People are dying of other diseases, patients with chronic diseases, non-communicable diseases, acute severe illnesses, present late or die at home. Our attention is diverted to the pandemic with little time or resources to look after those with these maladies. Many of these deaths are preventable and the fact that such deaths are, deaths are taking place reflects a breakdown in the provision of routine medical care, which is deadlier than the pandemic itself. 
As physicians, we too are afraid, afraid to provide the best of care to our patients for fear of contracting the disease ourselves or spreading it to our loved ones. COVID-19 brought with it desperation. It was seen as a deadly disease with no cure and little prospects of one given the record science has with treating viral diseases. People had a fearsome epidemic in front of them and were not prepared to wait. Society clamored for a quick remedy and science failed to deliver. It showed us how unprepared we are when faced with a deadly new disease. Is this because we are tied down with the rigors of scientific method, with the overriding principle that we should be sure that something works and is safe before we recommend its use? Our system of research is not one built for haste. Ethical safeguards and honesty have forced science to slow down and be cautious. What happens is that this leads to the widespread use of gunslinger medicine. As deaths mounted, doctors and patients rushed to use drugs and substances of dubious value without evidence for their efficacy or safety. Others with vested interests hoping to score where they could, stepped in and advocated remedies which were untested. Tens of thousands advocated the use of hydroxychloroquine after Donald Trump promoted it relentlessly, saying, what have you got to lose? The arguments raised on in Sri Lanka with physicians and some surgeons advocating its use the u and the use of many other useless substances in desperation. And what of these numerous remedies, these numerous drugs, promoted as cures for COVID-19? Some advocated may, uh, by many unleashed on an unsuspecting public. Have any of these worked? No, they have all failed so far. And yet, what have we got to lose? Why not try everything and anything that might work in some way? Do we really need to wait for these trials? Ladies and gentlemen, we live in a demon-haunted world. When science falters, when fear overcomes us, demons take over. Preying on our fear, surrounding us with the darkness of ignorance. In conventional times, we would hesitate to take medicines unless they were essential. Even though we know that they have undergone rigorous testing, and that all the side effects and benefits are known and accessible. But in times of desperation, we throw caution to the winds, and even our best scientists are willing to hang on to a thread of hope. But are we really willing to cut corners, expose our trusting patients to unknown substances, not knowing what harm they will do, knowing in our hearts that they are probably useless? The demons that bring us darkness can be dispelled only through science. Science is that candle in the dark. Let us not lose faith in science. Science is rigid in its making, slow and ponderous. Science asks too many questions, wants too many answers. But science has delivered time and time again, ridding us of the scourges over the ages where dubious therapies have failed. Malaria, which killed millions in the past, is now a dying disease eradicated from Sri Lanka. Smallpox is gone, cancers can be cured, HIV, which was deadly 20 years ago, is no longer a dangerous disease. All these have been achieved through science and no other paradigm of medicine has come even close to achieving what medical science has achieved. All the changes that have brought about in terms of human longevity and quality of life has been brought about by medical scientific research. Let us not undervalue it. Ladies and gentlemen, I believe that our college must play a bigger role in the advocacy of truth, making its voice heard to tell the public that which is right, that which is true, denouncing that which is false and that which is foolish. Our college should not be just a candle, but a beacon of light to dispel the darkness. Hope is humanity's strongest characteristic. Hope will overcome fear. Science is the flame which ignites hope. 
with perseverance we will overcome the virus will eventually vanish we will gradually become immune through the development of herd immunity and through vaccination science will win in the end that it all as it always has done together with human tenacity we must have faith not in prayers devils or witch doctors but in science and scientific method we must guard ourselves against the temptation of being carried away by reckless claims of benefit and hold fast to our principles of scientific method best evidence must always be sought out built on the knowledge gained from basic sciences research the pandemic has made us question ourselves whether the paradigm of evidence based medicine is fit for purpose to meet the unexpected challenges we may face however at least for now there is no substitute for evidence generated by rigorous scientific experiment however we must open our minds to other paradigms standing on the shoulders of giants seeking to see further than our predecessors have seen as a college we must take leadership in research making maximum use of the diverse skills our membership has building networks across the country joining academic physicians in the universities with the clinicians working at grassroots levels evidence must be generated locally asking the right questions seeking the answers to the specific problems we have rather than being driven by researchers in distant lands who seek to use our data to answer questions which are relevant to them but of little use to us we must take ownership of our research focusing on quality rather than quantity our college has an important role to pay, play in giving leadership and guidance to research this year the ccp will focus on strengthening research not just by providing research training and supporting funding but through a more broad based strategy of developing research policy for physicians in sri lanka by fostering research networks linking academics with clinicians and guideline develop and evidence synthesis will go hand in hand with all of these however let us not forget our prime role as a college which is to advance the competencies and practices of our colleagues in the field of medicine both physicians and physician trainees making our colleagues more up to date will result in better patient care and also enhance the prestige of our profession we will achieve this by strengthening our colleges educational and training activities throughout the year using innovative new technology to reach our colleague, colleagues across the country there will be an increased focus on skills training making physicians more skilled at what they do making them competent in the latest technological skills to enhance their practice this will be achieved through a series of, a series of innovative sessions throughout the year ending with our annual conference We also hope that our college will be able to strengthen our links with overseas colleges enabling the exchange and sharing of academic resources while making available academic and training positions for our trainees in overseas centers of excellence our college will link up academically with a wide range of overseas professional colleges not just in the UK but in other countries as well we will introduce simple point of care guidelines relevant to our country based on best evidence which are available at the bedside to all doctors at a glance this is integrally linked to ensuring the highest standards of med- standards of medical care and safety continuous professional development and continuous medication medical uh, education forms an important part of this and we also need to strengthen the mechanisms of clinical governance in our practice moving eventually to a system of appraisal by our peers and revalidation I would like to see our college play a greater role in enhancing the quality of postgraduate training by promoting closer interactions between our college and the postgraduate institute of medicine where I work. Our college should also play a greater role in defining the future role of physicians, generalists and finer specialists alike to fulfill the needs of the ministry of health, other state sector institutions and the private sector. there is a great need to project the requirements of physicians of different sub specialties in the future taking into account attrition as well as expanding demands of patients for high quality care 
This will require a closer relationship between physicians and policymakers in the Ministry of Health, keeping the needs and aspirations of the patient of this country as our priority. Ladies and gentlemen, the, the job of a physician is an extremely busy one. We often juggle several jobs at once. As a result, we face many ethical dilemmas. Time is often limited and we battle to finish our tasks through the day, hoping to find a little time to spend with our families. The public is quick, quick to criticize, but slow to understand or acknowledge the commitment that the vast majority of us make on their behalf. The irony of this is that we are often criticized or found fault with whatever we do. If we spend too much time, we are thought to be selfish and greedy. If we spend too much, queries are raised about our competence. We are often compared against the worst of us rather than the best of us. We are often accu accused of charging excessively although most of the time our fees are the lowest among equivalent professions. Temptation is easy to yield to. Ethical boundaries, once crossed, become easy to cross again. Once we get on the slippery slope of dishonesty, it is hard to restore our integrity and dignity. We should seek not to judge, rather to understand the compelling reasons which make some of us do what we do. So how do we strike a balance? How do we show the public that we self-regulate, that our profession is governed and accountable? We must show society that our practice meets the highest standards. Our college should take leadership in developing a framework for self-regulation, providing guidance to our membership and our trainees. In this regard, the senior members of the college, our teachers and our mentors have an important role to play to guide and support the younger mem members acting as role models to all of us, while setting the standards for us to measure ourselves by. Our college has an important role to play in bringing its members together as individuals and professionals to share a part of their social lives with each other. Apart from being enjoyable and entertaining, these opportunities for fellowship make us work together better and provide more concerted and coordinated care. Crossing the districts or regional meetings brings about more than just the dissemination of knowledge. It binds people together, makes them share their different cultural values and beliefs and traditions. Indirectly, it helps us understand the health beliefs and practices of other cultures, enabling us to adapt our methods to make our paradigm of care more uh, acceptable to our patients. The pandemic has placed a restriction on the conventional op opportunities for interaction but has opened up different platforms for sharing of ideas using social media. Diversity brings strength to the physician community, reminding us that though we may be different in some ways, culturally or ideologically, we have more to bring us together than to divide us. It is sometimes sad to see that diversity results in division, especially on social media platforms where it is easy to say careless things which may cause hurt, hiding behind the mask of anonymity. It is important for us, us to realize the importance of respecting the views of others, of not hurting their cultural sensitivities, while preserving the freedom of expression of scientifically valid views, whatever the medium for communication that we use. Our college should play a leading role in ensuring equality and diversity of our membership. Notwithstanding the obstacles placed by the pandemic, we will attempt to hold at least three regional meetings this coming year, with many other events streamed with local satellite meetings. We also hope to introduce a Fellows Day, giving an opportunity for fellows of our college, old and new, to meet and mingle. We also hope to introduce a forum for our trainee physicians, to enable them to generate and share new ideas while helping them develop networks with trainee physicians across the globe. Ladies and gentlemen, our college has a great history and has achieved a lot. We are proud of what each of us has contributed to make our college what it is. While being proud, we must also be introspective, critical when needed. We must try to become more aware of our limitations and shortcomings and try to put right things we can. 
we need to make our voice heard loud and clear letting everyone know that the Ceylon College of Physicians stands for great ideals emerging as the organization which sets the standards for our practice while also championing the cause of our patients perhaps at times we have become too exclusive we need to open our doors to our membership make them feel more inclusive wherever they are helping helping them and guiding them along the way to support their efforts at bringing about better patient care we must also be more austere in this age where money and resources are scarce based on what i have said let me spend a few minutes to outline what we are and what society expects of us as good physicians the care of our patients is our highest concern we have a responsibility to them to be competent to keep our professionals knowledge and skills up to date it is our duty to take prompt action if we think patient safety is being compromised we must establish and maintain good partnerships with our patients and our colleagues we must maintain trust in ourselves and in our profession by being open honest and acting with integrity our college has an important responsibility in supporting our membership to be good physicians by guiding us and supporting us to fulfill these responsibilities to our patients but is this enough and should we do more as a college i believe that we should reach out to the community more initiating healthcare pro- projects which directly benefit patient care perhaps we could work together to develop infrastructure and facilities in the less developed impoverished parts of the country perhaps we could campaign to draw in funding from the corporate sector to undertake social responsibility projects through which we develop facilities where they are needed most ladies and gentlemen these are difficult and ambitious tasks but with perseverance and commitment they are not beyond our reach ladies and gentlemen the road map for the college should not be drawn for just a year or two we need to look far into the future drawing our path with a vision of what we want to be some day we all have dreams and wishes for ourselves for our patients and for our college a few of these dreams and wishes will come true and many of them will not but that should not stop us from dreaming and wishing let me end with a simple wish for this year and beyond a wish that we can easily make come true and this is my wish for the college i wish that we be blessed with divine discontent not quite satisfied with what we have achieved always wanting more always wanting to do better always wanting to do more for ourselves to achieve greater heights as academics and professionals always wanting to do more for our college in terms of leadership and advocacy and excellence and most importantly wanting to give back more to the community at large to our patients who place their lives in our hands ladies and gentlemen a few words of acknowledgement which are due to my teachers my friends i thank you for the honor that you have given me and the trust that you have placed in me there are many people to thank and to remember on a long journey like this my sincere gratitude goes out to all those mentors and colleagues and numerous others who have helped and guided me through the years there are simply too many to name i will name a few for my being here on a personal note i have two people to thank one is a past president of the college and the other is i hope a future president chandani vanigathunga upul sanayak for convincing me to take up this office against my uh, will almost i also must mention shamita chamila and suranga and the councils new and old you have been pillars of support to professor rizvi sherif my mentor and teacher and the members that my dear colleagues of the department of medicine who unfortunately could not be invited because of the limitations of covid you have been gr- a great support to me throughout my career 
my sincere gratitude goes to the one person whom I consider my greatest mentor, Professor Janakari Silva. Thank you, sir, always. To my wife, Anoja, my deepest gratitude for being there every step of the way. And so to my mother, Prema Rajapaksa, for her quiet encouragement and patience through the years. And finally, my heartfelt gratitude to my father, Sirimanand Rajapaksa, whose memory continues to guide and inspire me each day of my life. Ladies and gentlemen, I pledge to do my best for our college, and I thank you for patiently listening. Thank you, sir. Now I'd like to invite you to present the past president's medal to Dr. Ananda Vijay Vikrama. Ladies and gentlemen, with this, we conclude the ceremonial induction of the 54th president of the Ceylon College of Physicians. May I request you to rise for the procession to leave. We kindly invite all of you to join us for dinner on the third floor. Thank you and have a great evening.